You know, today's gospel reading is about the inadequacies of the disciples when they're called upon to perform, if you want to call it that, or they're called upon to make a difference. And the gospel reading, you know, for the past several weeks now, we've been hearing the gospel has has taken the lives of the disciples and has had, it's placed them in a way and, and shown them in a way that shows their weaknesses and shows Christ's strengths for us to understand that Christ is the source of all our strength and we are the cause of our weaknesses. Which is very important theologically to understand that without Christ, we always hear that with God everything is possible and without him nothing is possible. We see this in the in the stories that even though the disciples are are next to Christ and they're with him, they are not as much a part of him as he requires them to be. So we hear in the Gospel reading today that this man comes up to the disciples and he presents his son who is sick. Now if it was epilepsy, if it was possessed, whatever the case was, he presents the child to the disciples and says, can you heal him? Can you do something for him? And they couldn't do it. And then he comes, he brings his child to to Christ, and Christ says, "Um, so why didn't you heal him? I mean, you can kind of tell that in in the tone of the gospel. Why, Why isn't he healed? And Christ gets upset and says, how long am I supposed to be here with you? How long am I supposed to do these things? And how long am I supposed to suffer with your inadequacies, especially when you're here with me walking with me in my life, I'm showing you everything, and you still can't get it together. Well, how much of a phrase is that for us as contemporary Christians? How we walk with God, and how still we fall into pitfalls, and we fall into temptations that are there around us everywhere, and God looks at us and says, well, why, why do you keep doing that? How long am I supposed to to tell you the same words over and over. And I guess that's the real meaning of the sermon today and the the sermon, not my sermon, but the sermon that comes from the gospel is how many times do we have to hear something before it sinks in? You know, it's, it's very interesting that, you know, with little children, you tell them, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, do that, and they keep going until sometimes they either burn themselves or they fall down or whatever. And... Anyone who is uh, a parent of a teenager who has ever talked to me has always mentioned the frustrations of telling their kids the same thing over and over every time. Be home by a certain time. Eat your food. Don't do that. Be nice to your sister or your brother. Uh, pay attention. Do good in school. And we say it over and over. And it's just a thing that's a, 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 a litany of requests for a person to follow the instructions that are best for them. And if you look at the church and you look at our lives as Christians, Christ calls us and he says the same thing over and over. Love one another as I have loved you. Forgive. Do all these things that he calls us to do. And what do we do? We still fall in the same problems over and over. The same temptations. Be strong as as parents. Be strong as spouses and understand the sacraments of the church. What do we receive when we come up for communion? You know, one of the classic uh, disappointments I've had as a priest was having a church service and leaving the church afterwards and hearing someone swear out in the parking lot that had just come up for communion 20 minutes earlier. And I don't know what they were mad at. They were mad at their kids or something like that, and they were yelling at their kids and... And I heard a couple expletives come out, and I'm just sitting there going, oh, gee, you know, how, what is it? How much, how many times do we have to hear that communion is for our forgiveness of sins and for eternal life, and then how quickly we turn around and forget in our lives as as married people or as family members? How many times do we look and do we say that we forgive those people around us? when Christ asks us all the time to forgive each other and to treat the children in our lives as those little angels that we're called to 
guide and to bring closer to God. How many times do we forget those things? Well, the, the statement today is, how many times does God have to tell us before it sinks in? And I guess that's a question we each have to ask ourselves is, how many times do I need to hear it before I really hear it? And sometimes it's when we're at the absolute bottom and we've hit absolute rock bottom in our lives and there's nowhere to go but up and all of a sudden those words resound from God in our ears. You know, some of the most supple hearts in Christianity are those who are suffering with loss because they're broken down. They either lost someone that they loved or they're dying themselves and all of a sudden their heart opens up to receive God. Why is that? Because for once, they are completely dismantled to realize that they can do nothing on their own. And many times, all of us think that we can do things on our own. And as soon as we do that is when we start to fail and we start to implode on ourselves and realize that we can't heal, we can't help, we can't save, we can't do anything because God, who offers all those things, is not part of us. So it's very important today to remember that you have to have a life in God. You have to have him part of who you are in your life as a, as a Christian, as a married Christian, as a parent, as a child. Whatever your dynamic of your life is, God has to be present in that so that those dimensions of failings um, disappear. That it's God who brings you up and makes your faults strengths and that God who gives you the strength not to fall back on your, your humanistic, self-centered self that we all tend to be without God. So today, remember a couple things. How many times do you have to hear the same thing over and over? And the history of the church says you have to hear it at least once a year. We hear this gospel reading today once a year. We have Easter once a year. We have all these readings that repeat over and over and over. Why? Because we forget or because we don't understand. So next time you decide to yell at your children and say, how come you never listen to me? In the same breath, think of Christ saying to you, my children who have children, how come you don't listen to me? Because it's the same exact complaints that we give and we pass down that are passed down from God to us. So, as the Gospel says and as Christ says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. It doesn't say just let him listen. Let him hear. Let him absorb and understand what's going on. And no matter how many times you've heard something, I encourage you to listen with new ears and to listen with a desire to understand. And one of the classic examples of how much we hear but we don't understand is if I went around the room, or around the church, and said, we say, give us this day our daily bread. What does that mean? What does that mean? And if we started picking apart the Lord's Prayer or the Creed and said, what does that mean? Well, most of us probably have never sat down and dismantled the creed to understand every line that it says or the Lord's Prayer. Maybe you have, that's great. But most of us as, as Orthodox Christians and as Christians worldwide probably have not done that. And why is that? Because we just say it. We say it rotely and we never absorb what is being said to us. It's a reminder that we should absorb what we're saying, we should absorb what we're praying, and we should also encourage our children, our families, to absorb what God is saying so that they can begin to absorb what we're saying to one another. Because if you can't hear God's voice first, you sure won't hear the voice of those around you, and especially the voice of God in those who call us to do better and to be better Christians each and every day. Amen.